All right, what's up with the YouTube fam? Man, I'm back again with another video. And before I move forward into the video, man, I got to start it out the right way by saying RIP to this young lady. And I also want to send my condolences out to her two beautiful children as well. And everybody else that's out there that had a genuine love for her. Now, this situation right here, man, is very, very crazy. And I really hate that this had to happen around the damn holiday season. I mean, I hate that it happened anyway, but just like, damn, the children got to grow up the rest of their lives remembering that this took place around this time, man. You know, one of the happiest times of a lot of people's lives is right now during the holiday seasons. And for this to happen, man, it just don't sit right with me at all. And another thing that I also want to say before I move forward into the video is that I do sound a little stuffy because I'm sick right now, so y'all got to bear with me, but I'm going to do my best to make sure that I'm crystal clear as much as possible throughout this entire video. Another thing that I also want to say is that everything that you need to know pertaining to this situation is in this video right here. You don't have to go anywhere else to find any more additional information. Everything is right here. So all you got to do is just sit back, relax, and just collect this information. Also, I want to say that you should hit the like button too if you're rocking with the channel. But other than that, let's get straight back into the story at hand. So Miss Abrea Baldwin, the 23-year-old mother of two, she was with her siblings for the holidays, as she should be. And two of her siblings were into it over some damn presents. One of the brothers got mad at the other brother because he didn't get as much as he thought he should get. And he also felt that the other brother was receiving more gifts than him. Which is crazy as hell. Something that's so kitty didn't need to go to this extent, in my personal opinion. Now, while they're in this altercation, Miss Abrea Baldwin stepped up to try to be the problem solver, to try to stop this situation. And Demarcus Cooley, her 14 year old brother, took her life instantly, you know, with no hesitation. The other brother, Darkest Cooley, he's 15 years old. He actually went and tried to take Demarcus Cooley's life for taking their sister's life, which I can understand him moving like that in his frustrations and stuff like that. Now, I see a lot of people saying what I've been thinking that these children are getting access to these guns too easily. Now, in the press conference that I have in this video, you can hear that the officer is basically stating that a lot of these kids are running across these firearms because they're inside of vehicles and stuff like that. So with that being said, if you're leaving your gun or any type of weapon inside of a car, you should want to stop doing that because you got to look at it like this, man. If they know that your weapon is in the car, they can ultimately try to break in your home and do some damage to you as well because they're going to feel like you're unarmed. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, go. One of the boys is in the rehabilitation center right now trying to get back to 100%. And he's well first degree murder he's going to be charged with that and i feel like that that's the perfect the perfect judgment for him i feel like that you know with these kids being at the age that they're at right now they know what the hell they be doing they might not be fully mentally capable of understanding everything but they know exactly what they shouldn't be doing i'm gonna put it like that but other than that man let's go ahead and get straight into the situation at hand i want to know your honest thoughts and opinions on the situation i done broke certain things down to y'all but there's a lot more information that's going to be brought up in these videos right here I just gave y'all a brief synopsis of the whole situation. I have said enough. Let's go ahead and get straight to the subject at hand. Eight new details on a fight between siblings that turned deadly on Christmas Eve. Investigators say shockingly began as an argument over who got more presents. This is Night Side. I'm Carolina Lead. Dave has a night off. In a story you'll see only on 10 Tampa Bay, tonight family members are speaking out for the first time about how this all went down. 10 Tampa Bay's Angelina Salcido spoke with them just a few hours ago. Carolina, this family is going through an extremely tough time right now after losing a 23-year-old mom of two just a day before Christmas. Hours ago, they honored her life about a mile from here with a candlelight vigil. That's where I spoke to her mom off camera. She tells me that she was there when the shooting happened and is just trying to process all of this. But tonight, this family wants Ariel Baldwin to know that she is loved and her kids are taken care of. The pain is unbearable. Candles illuminate photos of 23-year-old Abriel Baldwin and her two babies. They're now left without a mom. They're going to get taken care of regardless. Ariana Birch is Abriel's younger sister. She was a really sweet person. She was just special. The 21-year-old comforted by the love Bree's family and friends are showing tonight, but she's heartbroken. She didn't know people cared about her. She thought nobody didn't care about her. She lost not one, but three siblings. I feel like 
everything is destroyed and took it from me. Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Gualtieri says an argument between her two teen brothers turned violent on Christmas Eve. So you got the 14 year old who's mad at the 15 year old because mom's not buying equal amounts of gifts. Fight escalated once the family got to their grandmother's house in Largo. He takes out his gun and tells him he's going to in the head. When Abriel stepped in, she was shot in the chest by her 14 year old brother with his 40 caliber semi automatic. What she said was, knock it off. Leave it alone. Why are you doing this? It's Christmas. Second it's Christmas. Seconds later, deputies say his 15-year-old brother came outside and shot his brother. At one time in the stop. We are not naming the teen brothers in this case because of their ages. The 14-year-old still in the hospital tonight. After undergoing surgery, he is recovering. Charged with first degree. Those charges could later be upgraded. His brother is in a mental health facility getting treatment after threatening to take his own life. He's charged with attempted first degree. A tough loss for this family to process all three siblings gone right around the holidays. Shit. In Margo tonight, Angelina Salcedo, 10 Tampa Bay. I got the information. Still trying to recover a 45 caliber semi automatic. They're also working to figure out if both used here were stolen and possibly used in other crimes in our area. Friends are going to gather to remember the 23 year old woman, a young mother who was in the shooting. It happened at a home off 22nd Avenue Southwest and Trotter Road in unincorporated Largo at around 145 Saturday afternoon. 10 Tampa Bay's Angelina Salcedo is live at the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. And Angie, you spoke to family not long ago. Yeah, it has been a very tough Christmas Eve and Christmas for this family now grieving the loss of this 23-year-old mother of two who deputies say killed by her own 14-year-old brother. I want you to take a look at who we're talking about here. This is Abrielle Baldwin and her two sons. You can see them in the photo there. Six-year-old Jamari and Amir, who is just 11 months old. Her sister gave me this photo after we spoke moments ago. She says their family is heartbroken about her loss in this entire situation as they plan her funeral right before the new year. Now, bring Christmas Eve in a shooting here at her grandmother's home in Largo after deputies say a fight broke out between her 14 and 15 year old brothers earlier in the day. Investigators say that fight was reportedly over how many Christmas gifts each brother was getting while the family was shopping. She just a woman going about life, doing her thing uh, with her two kids, trying to make a living, trying to make it, and you know, her, her brother. <laughs> Uh, and why did her brother kill her? Because what she said was, knock it off. Leave it alone. Why are you doing this? It's Christmas. Why are you getting all upset? So he goes over and puts her in her, tears up her insides, and mm -hmm. leaves her dead in the driveway. True. Now, we are not naming the teen brothers in this case because of their ages. The 14-year-old is the one who the sheriff says his sister. After that shooting, his 15-year-old brother came out and the 14-year-old saying, my sister, Sheriff Walter. Now, they saying that the information isn't being released. Yeah, I got the information on who they are. The Mark is Cooley, Dark is Cooley, and later, all the information was released because all of this is public information. Just letting y'all know that the people that I showed y'all beforehand, the people that y'all are about to see right now, are the people who did this. So please don't get it misconstrued because they said what they said. But let's get back into the video. He says surveillance video shows were only eight seconds apart. Now, the 14 year old is in the hospital after undergoing surgery, but will be taken into custody after he recovers. As he He's should. With first degree child abuse, delinquent in possession of a firearm. The 15 year old is in a mental health facility getting treatment after threatening his own life. He's charged with attempted first degree and tampering with physical evidence after throwing the he used into a nearby yard. Now, Bree's family says that they have been trying to see the both of them, but the hospital won't let them into the hospital to go and see the 14-year-old. Tonight, they tell me they just want him to know they don't think he's a bad person. They just want him to get the help that he needs. As this investigation continues, deputies are going to work to find one of the firearms that they have not recovered and figure out if both of them have been stolen and possibly used in other crimes in our area. We're live tonight in Largo. Angelina Salcedo, 10 to 3 year old mother of two after being shot by her own brother on Christmas Eve. Abriel Baldwin was trying to break up an argument between her siblings when one of them pulled out a Fox Teens Edna Axelbank reports on what has the sheriff furious and the changes he is now calling for. 
Photos Abriel Baldwin posted to social media show her filled with joy. She's just a woman going about life, doing her thing, uh, with her two kids, trying to make a living, trying to make it. On Christmas Eve, while at her grandmother's home on 22nd Avenue in Largo, she'd had enough of her brothers bickering. Demarcus and Darkus began pulling guns on one another. Abriel told Demarcus, Quote, you all need to leave that stuff alone. Why are you trying to start it? It's Christmas. They both had been fighting over Christmas presents, with the 15-year-old Darkish jealous that their mom had spent more on gifts for 14-year-old Demarcus. After Abriel stepped in, Demarcus pulled a gun and fired, killing her, and sending her son and his nephew, an 11-month-old, falling to the ground. <clears throat> then, Darkus pulled his own gun and shot Demarcus, leaving him badly injured. This proliferation of guns on the streets and guns in this area and in the hands of these kids this is the worst I've ever seen. I don't think like I told y'all before, the two children was there. They actually witnessed this. Man, it's got to be some type of unbearable pain to go through for the rest of your life. I mean, like I said before, every Christmas holiday, you got to remember that your mother's life was taken. And then the manner that her life was taken is just crazy to me you know what i'm saying like i said before man a lot of these little dudes man they got their own mind made up they already following somebody else they idolizing the wrong people they got all this misplaced anger to the point where they don't know who to take it out on so they just go crazy you know in my personal opinion i mean they know what the hell they doing now but they still be going crazy in my opinion man they just having an identity crisis basically what i'm trying to say they think they even be a young boy they think they all type of different people man and they try to incorporate all these people into one person and try to make their, their personality and they get the tripping. She did not deserve to get a life taken like this. This shit is crazy, especially in front of her kids. Like, it just don't make no sense to me. But let's get back into it, though, man. The sheriff says the area around 22nd Avenue in Largo has been subject to extra patrols lately, with 13 related incidents since September. He says his office has gotten reports of 17 stolen from unlocked cars. He suspects the used in this shooting were obtained that way. And people can't leave their car doors unlocked and leave their in their cars. It's got to stop. Further, the sheriff says both juveniles have been let off the hook too easily by the juvenile justice system, particularly DeMarcus, who has a history of violence against school staff and law enforcement. The sheriff is calling for tougher laws. They are not getting the consequences that they should get that keep them from doing it again and again and again. Abriel was only 23, and now her kids, an 11-month-old and a 6-year-old, will have to grow up without her. Evan Axelbank, Fox 13 News. Demarcus has been charged with first degree. His sister, he's in the hospital and expected to recover. Darkus is charged with attempted first degree and is in a mental health treatment facility. Now, like I said before, that boy possibly had a whole bunch of problems beforehand. And I didn't get to watch that video clip right there in particular, but it's already known. He's been trying to do this to authority figures and everything. So you gotta just imagine like what he's putting everybody else through that's around him, like family members and stuff. And Miss Abriel was probably one of the only ones who can really just simmer him down what she thought she could. And it ended up going this way right here. You know, when somebody got their mind made up, man, it ain't too much that you can do about nothing. Especially when they already been damn near a loose cannon anyway. But I do respect them trying to still show him love, even though he's wrong. But me personally, I would have left his little ass on by this way. You done took somebody from us and their children. Nah, man. It's like he's just a big hassle. Let's get back into the video, though. Uh, so we're here this morning to talk about uh, that happened here in Largo on uh, Christmas Eve, December 24th, at about 1.45 p.m. Uh, the victim in, is Abrielle Baldwin, a 23-year-old black female. Her date of birth is May 5th of 2000. She went by the name of Bree and was a mom to two boys, a 6-year-old and an 11-month-old. The incident happened at 2357 22nd Avenue Southwest in Largo. We've arrested two people, <clears throat> and I'll explain the incident as to what happened. The first person that was arrested is Demarcus Coley. He's a 14-year-old black male, date of birth is May 2nd, 2009, and he's been charged with first-degree child 
and being a delinquent in possession of a firearm. The second is Darkus Coley. He's a 15-year-old black male, date of birth is January 31st, 2008, and his charges are attempted first degree murder and tampering with physical evidence, and both of them are in the photographs to my left, to your right, uh, and their brothers. So this is what happened. <clears throat> On Christmas Eve, as I said, uh, December 24th, uh, Abigail Baldwin, her 10-month-old son, her six-year-old son, her 14-year-old brother, Demarcus, her 15-year-old brother, Darkus, and their mother, Joyce Birch, who's a black female with a date of birth of June 25th, 1984, went Christmas shopping at a store here in Argo. While they're shopping, 15-year-old uh, Darkus was jealous that their mother, Joyce, was getting 14-year-old Demarcus more gifts than he was receiving. So they had this family spat about who was getting what and what money was being spent on who, and they're having this big thing going on in the store, and they're all arguing with each other. They left the store and headed to their grandmother's house, which is where the incident happened at 2357 22nd Avenue Southwest in Largo. Uh, they all piled into one car and they were heading over to uh, her house. The Coleys, along with Joyce Birch, lived at 608 Westminster Boulevard in Oldsmar. They were going to their grandmother's house because she was going to watch Bree's six-year-old and 11-month-old baby when she went to work. So they got there to this house on 22nd Avenue Southwest at about 1.45 p.m. on Sunday. Darkus, who's a 15-year-old, entered the home and went into the kitchen with his grandmother. Demarcus, a 14-year-old, stood in the doorway because he got to all argue and they're having this big spat about what happened while shopping and who's getting what and who didn't get what for Christmas. So this is just normal what people do when they have these young kids getting spats like this. And of course, I'm saying this sarcastically because they're all mad at his brother about what his brother was getting and is not getting. He stood in the doorway and he took out his 40 caliber semi-automatic handgun and he pointed it at Darkus and told him he was going to shoot him in the head. So you got the... 14 year old who's mad at the 15 year old because mom's not buying equal amounts of gifts. They get to grandma's house and he takes out his gun and tells him he's going to shoot him in the head. So Demarcus tries to get Darkus to fight. Uh, Darkus said he didn't want to fight and told him to get out of the house uh, and he didn't want anything to do with him. Now, uh, one of the boy's uncles was present in the home and, <coughs> excuse me, he separated them by moving Demarcus out of the house and moving him out into the driveway area. This is the house here to my right and to your left, and that's the door where he was standing into, and that's the driveway area that he moved him out to uh, where uh, this happened. And so Demarcus left the doorway. Demarcus is still in the house in the kitchen. Demarcus was standing uh, by a parked vehicle in the driveway when Abrielle told Demarcus quote, you all need to leave that stuff alone. Why are you trying to start it? It's Christmas. And at that point, Abrielle was in the driveway and she was carrying her 10-month-old baby in a carrier in her hand. Mm -hmm. Demarcus then began arguing with Abrielle and used some very, very derogatory language that I won't repeat it all, and all kinds of profanity. Uh, he was calling her a whore, all kinds of other stuff, mm -hmm. and stated that he was going to shoot her and that he was going to, quote, shoot the baby too. Demarcus then moved toward Abrielle and shot her in the chest with a 40 caliber semi-automatic handgun, again, while she's carrying the baby. Abrielle fell to the ground, so the baby, the baby was hurt because the baby was in a carrier. So when Demarcus falls to the ground, Darkus comes out of the house, and again, Darkus is 15, and he takes out his 45 caliber semi-automatic handgun because, again, I'll say this in the past, we just normal that all these kids, that's what you do, right? You just carry handguns when you get in a spat with your sibling, you take out your guns, you have a gun battle. Uh, so he takes out his gun and tells Demarcus, so Demarcus tells Demarcus, quote, you shot my MF sister, 
And then Demarcus shot Demarcus one time in the stomach. So Demarcus falls to the ground. I don't think it's the time to be sarcastic or anything like that. I think he should just go ahead and report it all the way through. But I can understand what he's trying to do at the same time. Now, for him to be calling her all these different names, saying what he's saying to her, he's already had some type of prior history of not obeying certain things and certain laws and certain authority figures and stuff like that. It lets you know a lot about everything that was taking place with this boy. He ain't been right. He's been very, very hard to control around the house and stuff like that. And ultimately, man, he was just a loose cannon, like I said before. Now, listen, I'm going to go ahead and let him finish saying what he got to say, giving y'all the rest of the details. I don't say what I had to say. I still feel like it's a very tragic situation that took place, and I still feel like that it should be no sympathy for him, in my personal opinion. You know, this is how I feel. But other than that, man, that's all I got to say. I'll holler at y'all later on another video. And, uh, yeah, man, let me know what y'all feel about everything that the police officer is about to say because he's going to break everything else down to y'all until it's my new. But yeah, I'm gonna holler at on another video. All, All right. kinds of other stuff. And stated that he was going to her and that he was gonna quote the baby too. DeMarcus then moved toward Abriel and in the chest with a 40 caliber semi-automatic handgun, again, while she's carrying the baby. Abriel fell to the ground, so did the baby. The baby wasn't hurt because the baby was in a carrier. So when DeMarcus falls to the ground, Darkus comes out of the house. And again, Darkus is 15, and he takes out his 45 caliber semi-automatic hand. Because again, I'll say this sarcastically, just normal that all these kids, that's what you do, right? You just carry When you get in a spat with your sibling, you take out your you have a gun battle. Uh, so he takes out his and tells Demarcus, so Darkus tells Demarcus, quote, you shot my sister, and then Darkus, Demarcus one time in the stomach. So Demarcus falls to the ground, um, and when Darkus, Demarcus, Demarcus was unarmed, and there's about an eight-second gap between the time that Demarcus Bree, and then Darkus comes out and Demarcus, and when he he no longer had possession of the gun. Darkus, the 15-year-old, the, uh, then uh, ran through in a nearby yard, fled to a relative's house up in Clearwater where we subsequently arrested him. Unfortunately, Abriel Baldwin was transported to Largo Medical Center Hospital here in Largo with a single gunshot wound to her chest and she was pronounced in the hospital. Uh, basically, the round went in through her left arm into her chest area, went across, uh, went into both lungs, all kinds of internal she bled out and it popped both lungs, she couldn't breathe. Demarcus uh, was transported to a hospital where he underwent surgery. He's in custody, uh, remains in the hospital, is in stable condition, and upon release, he'll be transferred to the custody of the Florida Department of Juvenile Justice. The Pinellas Pasco State Attorney's Office is going to review the case and decide whether to charge Demarcus as an adult with the first degree sister. Darkus, again, the 15 year old made self-harm statements after we picked him up at the location where he was in Clearwater and he is right now in a secure mental health facility and he'll be charged with attempted first degree and tampering with evidence and transported to the Pinellas Juvenile Assessment Center upon his release from the mental health facility. The 40 caliber handgun that DeMarcus used his sister was recovered at the scene and the 45 caliber handgun that Darkus, Darkus used to Marcus has not been recovered. Again, when he ran, he tossed it in the backyard. We've searched that area out there. We can't find it. And the unfortunate reality is, is probably going to be used in the next crime because somebody probably picked it up and there's all kinds of people over there. And as I'm going to talk about here in about one second, there's way too many guns out there on the street, way too many crime guns out there, way too many stolen guns. Everybody's got a gun these days. And the sad part is that thing's going to be used in another crime because somebody picked it up. As you can see behind me in the photograph, uh, DeMarcus, again the 14 year old, recently posted a photo to Snapchat uh, pointing the gun that he used to kill his sister at the camera. So this is within the last couple days and this is a Snapchat photo. That's DeMarcus pointing that gun, which is this gun, which we recovered there at the scene, which is the gun that he used to kill his sister. So there's the Snapchat photo and there's the gun that he used to kill his sister. 
According to many people that we interviewed out there, all kinds of people, family members, young, old, everybody across the board, is that both DeMarcus and Darkus carried guns all the time. They routinely carried firearms on them. People knew it, that's what they did. Uh, and a lot of it, uh, they claim, is because of uh, recent ongoings in the Ridgecrest Baskins area where they were accosted. And we've had a number of incidents I'll talk about in a second over there uh, in the last couple of months. But again, these young kids, 14, 15 years old, routinely carry firearms. And this is what happens when you got young delinquents that carry guns, they get upset, they don't know how to handle stuff, so they just take out their guns and start shooting, shooting each other, and one of them kills his sister, who's a mom to a 10 month or 11 month old baby and a six year old boy. So how are they getting these guns? Well, it's real easy. They're getting them because they're either buying them on the street cheap, and they're all stolen guns, and for these two guys, they're getting them because they're stealing them from unlocked cars, they're out in the middle of the night doing car burglaries. Both DeMarcus and Darkus were arrested for committing numerous car burglaries in Oldsmar, where they live on Westminster Avenue, uh, back in May of this year. Uh, DeMarcus, the 14-year-old, has arrests dating back to when he was 12 years old. Think about this. He has arrests dating back to when he was 12. He's only 14 now, okay, but two years ago he has arrests for being a minor in possession of a gun, grand theft auto, auto burglaries, loitering and prowling, disorderly conduct, battery on a school employee, and battery on a law enforcement officer. He's only 14. Darkus was also arrested in May for committing numerous auto burglaries. Many of those cases are still pending. In the dispositions with DeMarcus previously, is, is that, what's he get? Probation. The problem is, is you got way too many kids out there with way too many guns. And they're getting them because they're buying them on the street, cheap, 50 bucks for a gun, whatever, breaking into cars, and they're stealing the guns out of the unlocked cars. And I've talked about this a long time. And those of you who have been around here for a while, remember going back now to December of 2014. Charlie Kondek, Tarpon Springs police officer, shot and killed. Where did the gun come from that killed Officer Kondek? An unlocked car burglary, because people leave their guns in their cars. And these punks, these thugs, go out and break into the cars, they take the guns, and they use them for crime, and they kill people. Like they killed Charlie Kondek, and like, DeMarcus Coley killed his sister. So just in the last 30 days alone, just in our system, and this doesn't include St. Pete Police Department, it doesn't include Largo Police Department, it doesn't include Pinellas Park Police Department, just in our system alone, and this is what was reported, and they're not all reported because people don't report them all, just in our system alone in the last 30 days, we've taken reports where 17 guns have been stolen from unlocked cars. You know, I get, some people say, look, I can do what I want. I can leave my cars unlocked. I can leave my gun in my car. You know, it's not the responsible thing to do, but they do it. And the problem is the thugs that are stealing them, and I agree with that. The problem is don't steal people's stuff. But the reality is, is that you got punks like this out there criminals out there like this that are doing it and going to do it and then they're going to go and hurt people and people can't leave their car doors unlocked and leave their guns in their cars. It's got to stop. See, you couple that with since September, just in the Ridgecrest Baskins area alone, which is where this happened, a couple miles to the west of here. We've had 13 shootings or incidents involving guns in that area. And according to everybody, everybody's carrying guns over there. All these kids are carrying guns. And again, they're getting them from where I just said. So this really, this proliferation of guns on the streets and guns in this area and guns in the hands of these kids this is the worst I've ever seen. I don't think we've ever seen it this bad. 
I really think that we need tougher laws to deal with these kids. Um, as you can see with their criminal histories, they are not getting the consequences that they should get that keep them from doing it again and again and again or deterring others from doing it again and again and again. And I really hope the Florida legislature in the upcoming legislative session will get serious about it and will pass legislation that will hold these kids accountable and help us to slow this down. Because if we don't slow it down, we got a big problem. And I've never seen it as bad as it is with the number of crime guns that are on the street and the number of shootings and the number of people that we come across that are illegally carrying guns. And again, they're getting them out of unlocked cars. That's primarily where they're coming from. And all we can do is ask people, really plea with people, don't leave your guns in the unlocked cars. And deal with people like this. You know, enough of this slap on the wrist. Enough of this, you get arrested because you got a gun, you get, uh, you steal a car, you hit a cop, battery on a school board employee, that was another charge that DeMarcus had. You got all this stuff, and what happens to him? Oh, well, you know, he's only 14. He really doesn't understand what's going on. Oh, we'll just give him probation. It's not working. It is not working. And if you do what you've always done, you're gonna get what you always got. It needs to change. The laws need to change. We need to get serious and we need to get tough and these kids need to get locked up. Send a message. So now you got a 11 month old and a six year old boy that their mom's dead. You don't ever get undead at the hands of a punk who was upset because he didn't get enough Christmas presents from his mom. And it's, you know, it, 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 it's ridiculous. Anybody got any questions? You mentioned uh, grandma and uncle were home at the time. Um, were they involved in any way? How are they doing at this point? Well, I mean, they were involved in it. You know, the uncle tried to separate them. They knew that it was going south. They knew that they were arguing. They, and, and again, everybody, really everybody, knew that these guys carried guns all the time. So, you know, uh, you know, it just, it was common knowledge. So they weren't hit at all the people or anything like that? They weren't shot? No. Everybody's fine. The only person, again, it was two shots that were fired. Is that one shot from DeMarcus into his sister and one shot from Darkus into DeMarcus. So, two shots. That's all it takes. Can you also spell Abriel's name? True. It's um, A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Baldwin, B-A-L-D-W-I-N. Sheriff, you were really specific on the bear on the length of time between the two shots mm -hmm. being fired. Just curious how you can be that specific. It was there's an audio out. recording of it. Not so, one was called or something. That was so there's a uh, neighbor that has outdoor cameras, and while the shooting itself is not captured on the cameras, the audio of the shooting is. So you can hear shot. And then eight seconds later, the second shot. That's how we know. Can you just, and you've said a few words already. Can you just say a little bit more about Abriel and what you know about her? And now, you know, she's got two kids. Well, what's going to happen to them now? Sure. Yeah, I don't know. I guess mom, grandma, you know, somebody will step in, uh, take over. She was working at an assisted living facility. She's just a woman going about life, doing her thing uh, with her two kids, trying to make a living, trying to make it. and. You know, her, her brother <laughs> killed her. <laughs> uh, and why did her brother kill her? Because what she said was, knock it off. Leave it alone. Why are you doing this? It's Christmas. Why are you getting all upset? So he goes over and puts a bullet in her, tears up her insides, and kills her. Leaves her dead in the driveway. Here, so they're, they're all brothers and sisters here, right? Just all siblings. Yep. So uh, Bree, Demarcus, Darkus. Is a, they're all brother sister. Yep. And, and again, it goes back to there's a, there's a reason why the law says it's not strict enough right now. And I hope this changes this legislative session. Right now, a minor in possession of a firearm is a misdemeanor. This guy's had prior 
minor in possession charges. You don't get anything out. There's no consequence for it. You know, and, and this is why the law, though, says that kids shouldn't have firearms. But the law doesn't mean anything to people like this. They don't care about the law. I mean, they're out breaking into cars in the middle of the night, stealing guns, doing all kinds of other stuff, loitering and prowling, all the stuff that's in his history, um, hitting cops, hitting school board employees, everything else. They don't care about that stuff. But, it, it, but there's a reason why they can't have They're not old enough to understand and have the right coping mechanisms to deal with the stuff when they are upset. I mean, the fact that you get upset, you get two 14, 15 year olds to get upset with each other because one got more. I mean, that happens. I mean, that's just, that's kid stuff. But not with guns. Where are you at in terms of the testing of the firearm that you have? And I assume you'll try to figure out if someone ever reported this gun stolen. Yeah, so we're, we're obviously uh, looking at that. That's a big part of the investigation. Right now, I can tell you that the uh, 40 caliber that the Marcus had that we uh, recovered was that Smith & Wesson, which is that one, the one you see behind me here, is, is that it is not in the system been reported as stolen. It's stolen. It came out of a car. Somebody just didn't report it. And sometimes they report it as stolen, and they'll report their gun stolen, but they don't have the serial number because they don't keep it. So they report it to us, but we can't put it in the system, or another agency can't put it in the system unless you got a serial number for it. So it may well have been reported, but nobody had the serial number, or it wasn't reported. It's stolen. So we have some systems that we can use uh, through the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms through ATF, where we can check the projectiles to see if that gun has been used in other crimes. And we're in the process of doing that. That takes some time. Now, the second gun that Darkus had, we haven't recovered. Uh, we've got um, casings uh, from it. Uh, from the firing of the firearm, but we don't have um, the firearm itself. Like I said, that's still out on the street, unfortunately. Do you have a picture of that real? Do um, I don't, we'll see if we can get you one. You know, I'm not sure if we do. I, we'll see if we can get you one. Sheriff, I was wondering, you are asking for changing the laws because right now they are not street enough. Um, we have this uh, violence, this gun violence with big uh, teenagers. So right now, if you, I mean, the authorities would be to stop these teenagers with these guns that are stolen, what will happen to them? Well, today, with a lot of the offenses that kids commit involving guns is, is that there's no mandate that they go into what is called in the juvenile system residential programs, which is really jail or prison, that they get sentenced to a period of time. Uh, you get these kids that are minors in possession of firearms. 14, 15 year olds like this shouldn't have guns. 14, 15 year olds with dad or grandpa going out hunting, that's fine, go for it. It's responsible, there's no issues with it. But 14, 15 year olds carrying guns in their waistbands, walking around the neighborhood, just waiting for something to happen, no. And the problem is, is that today, today it's a misdemeanor. Um, you're not going to get anything. And so they're doing it with impunity. They're walking around with these guns with impunity. And, you know, when you score under the guidelines um, by committing these car burglaries and they're taking these guns or they're just out there committing these car burglaries that are doing the grand thefts and they're doing all what they're doing, is, is that the consequences aren't there. And it, 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 this is where you end up with these kids that it takes many, many, many times for them to score at the right level where there's consequences. So what I'm saying is, is that we need to change it. And we've got to provide some uh, swift, harsh consequences up front to punish the conduct and to deter the misconduct of others. And have there be some skin in it. Make them realize that this is going to be unpleasant. I have a tragedy like this one. What's that? And avoid a tragedy like this. Yeah, no, try and avoid the tragedy. That's what we want to do. That's the whole reason for it is, is to try and avoid the tragedy, like you said, and to try and keep it from happening. And the only way to do it is to send a message. And the message is, we're not going to put up with it. But unless the consequences are there, we can say we're not going to put up with it. But guess what? We as a society, we as a criminal judge, we are putting up with it because we let them have these multiple bites at the apple. I went through what uh, DeMarcus's criminal history is. 
and he's got all this stuff in the past and he doesn't care. Obviously he doesn't care because if he cared he wouldn't do it. How long ago was, uh, was this most recent arrest? Uh, a few months ago. A few months ago. Both of them have equal type history charges. Actually, DeMarcus has more than Darkus does. Uh, Darkus's history isn't that extensive. DeMarcus's history is pretty extensive. It is less. Actually. Yeah. Is there a plan for an increased law enforcement activity in the neighborhood where this is occurring? We have been. We've had uh, increased presence in uh, patrols out there in the last couple months because of this problem with guns. And, but in this type of a situation where it's used in a domestic type environment, we could put a thousand cops out there, ain't gonna stop it. <laughs> you know, so what we're trying to do with the increased patrols out there is deal with the street crime, deal with people that are using the guns when they're selling drugs, when they're doing robberies, where they're carjacking, when they're doing all kinds of other street related stuff. And we're trying to get the guns off the street and we've had some success with it. Uh, by being very intensive with the patrols uh, that we've had out there and putting extra people out there. So we have and we'll continue to do that, but there's nothing we can do to stop that other than get the guns out of these guys' hands and not have them have guns to begin with. We can't stop that kind of thing. There's nothing we can do on that, uh, it, it directly. Now indirectly, again, with what I'm talking about and consequences in the system and people not leaving their guns in their cars, those kinds of things. But we can put a cop on every street over there in Ridgecrest Baskins or in any other community and that's not going to stop that. When it, when it comes to talking about people leaving their guns in their cars or leaving them unlocked, is there any kind of penalty towards them if that gun is found to be stolen? I mean, do you think something like that needs to change as well? No. You know, I, I, it is that, and the question is, and this comes up, you know, is, you know, it, it, because as you're asking the questions and people watching, they can't, they can't hear the question. So it's, it's, the question is, should there be consequences against people for leaving their cars on the lot and leaving their guns in their cars? Is there consequences? Was your first question, and the answer was no. And the second question, should there be? You know, I don't think so. Um, I, 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 the problem is them. Okay? It's an ask of people. Help us, because we got a problem. And our problem is them. You know, if somebody parks their car in the driveway, and some people do it mistakenly. They just didn't mean to. Other people, and I tell you, because we talk to people about it. And some people say, look, this is my property, this is my house, this is my car, this is my driveway. If I want to leave my car unlocked, and I want to leave my wallet and my gun and my stuff in my car, I should have a right to do that. And, you know, and, you know they got a point. But, okay, I hear you, and you're, and you're right. And that's why there shouldn't be any consequence for it. But we got a problem, so help us. You know, that's why I'm asking and pleading it, you know, help us. Because until we can do something to tighten guys like this up, is, is they're going to keep taking your stuff. Um, but people do it, you know, and some people, again, do a mistake, make a mistake. Others, that's just what they do. They say, I'm just not locking my car. Yeah. And you said he was shot in the stomach. Is he still in the hospital right now? He is. Mm -hmm. uh, What's his condition? He's stable. Well, he's torn up pretty good. Uh, his intestines, they had to remove part of his intestines and do some other things in surgery, but he's stable. Um, he'll be in a hospital, but probably the best projection, I just got off the phone before I came down here, best projection is he'll probably be in a hospital for about a week or so. And then again, we'll transfer him to the Department of Juvenile Justice custody uh, once he's released from the hospital. All right, thanks everybody. <laughs>